G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and uh, right now I'm actually not here. I'll be in New Zealand and I won't be sunning myself, it's beautiful weather here but I guarantee it's going to be a little bit colder over there. Jan and I are over catching up with Ellen and Zach over there and uh, Sam and Veronica are going to fly in and we're going to have a couple of days skiing as well so who knows what could happen. Just to let you know, Janet and I are going to be strolling around the boat show on Saturday the 5th of August at the Sydney International Boat Show. Uh, we're, we're not going for any real purpose because we're just going to have a bit of a wander around. We've got a couple of things we need to tie up so if you catch up with us, if you see us there, say good day and introduce yourself. So last night after we did this, we had all these flimsy spray sheets, drop sheets all pinned up and uh, I came in this morning, there's about two inches of water in the cockpit. So this here, all around the helm station around here, collecting where it should, by the way, um, around this area here at about two inches of water. I spent half an hour cleaning the place up and, and Janet's now re-rigging some of the drop sheets because they were everywhere. Um, but we're not that worried about today because I'm only concentrating on the flat panels here. And if I can get a little bit more material, I've got a little bit of unfairness here. So I'm happy to sort of get some more material on it. And then uh, I think we're going to come back and, and do some flow coating with a roller. Job first, mate. <laughs> yeah, all right. Started removing all the drop sheets. Thank God that's over. But we have got to do a little bit more sanding because I'm not overly happy. Um, I'm happy, but I'm not happy. It's still got a bit of a texture here, so we're going to just roll this with a good quality brush flow coat, I think, and uh, just removing all these bits of masking tape. Look at that. It's like it's one piece. Well, it will be. Yeah, it's awesome. It's all right, eh? Yeah, it's pretty Yeah, awesome. pick some of that masking tape off. That's, it. That's good. Well, that's good. That'll be able to polish in. So what you can do now is... Instruction from the super coach. Sorry? Instruction from the super coach. Oops. It's more faster than me. It's just the same speed as me. Look at that line. Now we've got a, we've got about a two inch fairing line. We can fair down to that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. A bit frustrated. A bit that. tired. Super coach got a bit frustrated. I know. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. Notice a different colour. That's because that's been there for six months. That's been perfect. Yeah. It's work faster then. Tell you what, watch that hair doesn't stick to it. Alright. Looking like it's actually part of the boat, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it does. Wow. Well done. Oh, it's great. Well done. Oh, it looks unreal, honey. That's brilliant. That's been a, a big job, that. But yeah, this is looking good. I mean, it's all just needs to be polished out now. We've got to work out how we're going to do some detail around these light runs. Um, I think there's a way we can probably get a nice bit of detail along here with some masking and some rolled texture. You didn't have to flow coat that. Good job. Got my security camera up here. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually, you could actually milk it. I didn't have anything to cover it. I didn't want to mask it up, but it is covered in overspray, but the lens isn't. So there we go. Anyone breaks in now, we're good done. They could have got away with it last night. <laughs> but in the storm that we had, oh, I've broken that. Shit. You broke the camera now. The bloody aerial's broken on it. Oh, because you just pulled it off. No, because I got caught on it the other day with my back. Anyway, that's good. We're back in, back online. So we had a big stormy last night and um, about two inches of water here and all this masking tape's wet so it's got to come off. I'll possibly leave it on but it's going to end up going to pulp. Is that all pulpy? Yeah. Yeah, so that water. If we didn't get this off, you might be lucky to get that off actually. Well, it's not bad, is it? I think it's good to get it off now. Yeah, look at that. You wouldn't know that. There's like six layers of glass holding that bloody module together. See, we've like been in the army with a toothbrush now. Yeah? <laughs> okay, after copious amounts of preparation and uh, some hand sanding around where this helm joins onto this modification and the new stairway and the whole helm station, I'm just going to give it one more light coat of flow coat so that I can come in and give it a polish. I actually started polishing this back. It's looking pretty good. I've got a couple of little thin spots here and here, and that's pretty much all I've got to deal with now is a couple of little fared spots 
here. There's always touch-ups to be done. And uh, basically, get this done. I should be able to just polish it out and uh, and get the thing finished. That's going to be really nice to have that uh, done and dusted all the way around here. So I'm just going to spray up a couple of cupfuls and, uh, and get some more material on here. We've got a, quite a lot of bits here where I've faired it out, and it's actually looking pretty good. I've just got to be careful I don't put too much on there because I don't want to be sanding this whole thing again. If you want to see an absolute dickhead in action, here's one. Look at this. Give it some, son! Oh! <laughs> what a shocker! Oh, what a shocker that is! <laughs> Brilliant! Bloody Cortinas, that's about the best one on the market. That's, uh, that's an absolute cracker. Oh god, and then we got Jaden. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Alright, we're putting in some fake windows because I'm about to start sanding out the interior and I'm sick of the dust. Just sick of it. I've got to try and deal with it. Um, vacuum it up rather than just blow it all into the next room and then I'll spend more of my life vacuuming. So Janet's giving all the windows a good clean. I love cleaning. I'm just, well, hey. You clean the house, I'll clean the boat. That's the rules. Delete that or you go through the hole. You're not going to use that. No, I won't use that. Damn right, you're not going Right out, a couple of days ago I sprayed all of this helm station. I've given Jan the arduous task of polishing. I think you're actually enjoying it, aren't you? Yeah, I do. It's so pretty polishing. cathartic. Look at that. I mean, it's you're bringing that up to a... It's not heavy duty sanding, so it's quite No, durable. it's really nice and light. All we're trying to do is get the spray texture. There's a little bit of a texture on it and get it down to super smooth like this. I mean, you would not know that that was a number of different old fiberglass parts all glass together it's looking really good it's not even buffed yet and it's already looking perfect and we've got this integration between the helm station and the cabin side or cabin wall is basically done and then on here will be a piece of anti-slip now i've had a bit of a problem <laughs> and i'm going to fess up to that problem because i have sprayed this bugger three times now and i'm done and yesterday as you'll see here i actually spent another four or five hours polishing and sanding back and fairing any uneven surface here and i've got this absolutely spot on now so i'm about to spray 
all of this and uh, I've basically set myself up for plenty of um, plenty of just light spray just to cover up the dark spots. I'm not going to spray the whole thing because pretty much it's okay, but it is ready for a final polish and then Janet, oh, I don't know how Janet's going to polish this actually, how are you going to do that? On a milk crate. I'm not doing any more overhead work after this week. It's been hours, I've spent weeks on this thing. Three weeks of overhead sanding and I'm done. But uh, this is hopefully going to be the end of it. And then we've got a bit of a uh, big day on tomorrow. We're going to use uh, the Raptor liner for the textured surface here, which is just never going to be good enough. And uh, if I'd thought about it, I probably could have fared and painted this upside down. But then I couldn't have done it because I had added a whole lot of other bits and pieces but yeah plenty of uh this here is actually going to be flow coat the rest of it is going to be wrapped a liner and i've got my wrapped a liner here i bought the professional spray gun so by tomorrow morning we should be able to whack on the raptor and never have to do another thing on this thing because that's a two-pack urethane finish it's going to just fill all of this uh yeah and we'll have to remask and uh respray about an hour and a half later so plenty to do I feel a bit of mutiny in the ranks here. I just said to Janet, would you like to mix and, and film for me? She went, oh, okay. <laughs> Do it again. Would you like to film and mix it for me? <laughs> yes, darling, I'd love to. That's what the answer I'd like I to see. I went on a massive walk yesterday and I haven't got the energy to be enthusiastic <laughs> about anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I slaved away, Janet oh. was out hiking through the bush with a machete, I think, by the look of all the, the scars on her. <laughs> so what we're finding... Hang on, start again. So what we're finding with the bushwalking is that because of the fires and then two years of rain, there's no high trees because they're all burnt, so all the undergrowth is coming through super thick, which would normally be dead. So all the trails have disappeared. So it's just vines everywhere that don't give, and you've got to cut through the vines to get anywhere. It's a bush so, yeah, bash. It certainly was. <laughs> I'm actually doing okay, aren't you? Yeah, you got wounds all over you from the hake here. Not too many nicks. <laughs> cool. Exhausting. Yep. I do love the flow coat, it gets, it gets that instant shimmer and we won't spray, we won't polish this until we do the wrap. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to personally introduce you to potentially the most dangerous tool on earth and uh, it's a winner though it's my Makita polisher old trusty with this I guess it's a drywall sander and uh, man it's dangerous because there's no guard and you'd imagine that going full bore on the roof there you get your finger caught in that it's gone you get anything caught in it it's gone but it is actually giving me the ability to be able to sand down and get the first level of sanding done on my cabin top here. Now, I have already uh, experienced there's a lot of dust in here at the moment, so I've masked up my electrical compartment. It's still getting you know, a certain amount of air from underneath, so cooling's not really an issue and everything's on in there. Uh, I've got a tiny little hole there for um, breathing for the batteries, and pretty much I've got a couple of doors plastic door here, plastic door here to mitigate the dust uh, coming in and out of these rooms but it's not going to stop it uh, I mean the dust in there is just already bullshit but at least it might control some of the dust because uh, this thing's going to create a lot of dust but what I want to do is, is get a first sand done right now so that I can establish how fair this ceiling is I've already hit it with a, 
I flapped this grinder and I'm sort of expecting to itch like a bastard for the next couple of weeks while I get all this done. But essentially I'm going to try to get this entire cabin roof sanded down. And, uh, you know, it's not a high headroom, so it's not like I'm reaching above my head like I was when I did the, the hard top here. Because when I was sanding this, this was days and days and days of overhead sanding. Really, I don't have a lot of overhead sanding here. It's pretty much at about my eye level. So I'm able to uh, to get that pretty much knocked down pretty quickly with this tool. And uh, you just have a look at this thing. It is freaking lethal. That was a tough afternoon. <laughs> um, Easter Monday, 2023. Did not think I'd still be in here, or I certainly didn't think I'd be fearing on Easter Monday. I've just sanded the entire saloon, and you see my plastic sheets covered in dust, so that would have been external to the air. I've just vacuumed the joint out, so it's looking a lot better. I'll give it another clean tomorrow, and uh, and then I can start to work on some individual pieces. My plan would be to potentially flow coat this module, get that at least done so that we can uh, call that a day on that one. Now we're intending to have a switch panel here, a four gang switch here, and some sort of a compartment underneath there. I'm not gonna rush that, that's not really important. Uh, there's a lot of other things that need to be that need to be done here. Now the detail around these window mullions is very important. You can see up in here, this spot up in here, this has all got to be hand sanded to get a little bit of a nice neat um, finish there because it is going to be so sort of roughly a feature of the thing. And the other thing I need to do down here, uh, very, very hard to see, you can see all the dust on this plastic, but see how thick this is here and how thin it is here. I need to run a straight edge from about here all the way down to here and fill this with some sort of a filler, you know, potentially cabasol and some um, polyester and just get it filled so that it's level with the rest of it. It's all pretty good. It's a little bit thick down in this corner here, but I will actually, I'll knock that down to uh, to get it pretty even. But the rest of the place is actually looking pretty good. There's uh, a lot of work to be done. And this centre mullion here, I haven't quite sanded it yet. I've got to do a little bit of work here. Still got to tie in the mast post down in the bottom here this still has to be laminated to that and then this will all be flow coated polished up uh, to match the module and then we're going to have the raptor coating down to that edge god christ knows how i'm going to spray that i'll work that out <laughs> so the raptor will go right down in under here and down past those windows and all the way down to the seam between the deck and the hull and then I'll be lining from there down and then I'll have potentially either a laminate uh, stuck onto the freezer wall there or a white gel coat sheet. Now that's another thing that I can do to really speed up my outfitting is lay up flat sheets of gel coat in the factory with a spray gun, put two layers of glass on it, two very, very small layers and then just stick the panel on the wall and that is a really good way to control the quality of your finishes. Another way that you can do it is fair and spray it and I could flow coat those walls and then spend oodles of time sanding and fairing them. But uh, I'm all for speeding this process up now because I want to move through this boat relatively quickly to get to the mechanical and the plumbing side so that we can get the thing on the water. Now the other thing too, I'm going to continue the Raptor once again down here, down to the back of the helm station here. And I will actually probably do this before I finish my helm station down into there into that module there and I'll decide an arbitrary line where the where the gel coat finishes and the raptor finishes or raptor starts and then same deal down here do down here now that bulkhead is likely to be a beach laminate uh, that I'll just stick on there so that's going to be pretty quickly I could veneer it but honestly this is not a a, uh, a traditional wooden boat this is a, a plastic boat and to be honest I'm pretty happy just having plastic sheet where I need it and uh, good quality fiberglass where I don't and, uh, and I'm really really stoked at how this is all coming up it's uh, an absolutely brilliant brilliant result we've got some pretty nice integrations going here 
and Janet spent all day Friday here, Easter Friday, sat down here on the haunches and hand polishing this. I actually got this to a level that I was pretty happy, but she's taken it to 1200 grit, and that looks like it was there from day one. And it looks like it actually popped out of the mold. And once I remove those blue bits there, uh, the blue masking tape, that's actually got anti slip already glued on there. I've got a sheet of anti slip there for the helm station. I do have, oh, bugger, I just did some spraying. I do have a little bit of spraying to do here. Should have done that while I had that there, but that'll wait for the next time. And then we can take a look at the helm station cut out and the combing here you can see how good this has come up now i had a couple of questions about the winch that's going to sit here on this plinth and the jammer box that is here somewhere uh basically i'm going to have that on a raised uh plinth and we may need to scallop out a little bit of this combing here but uh, that certainly won't stop uh, rain coming over it's just basically a bit of a water dam and it's going to get rid of most of the water we do accept the fact that we're going to get water into this area here but if you look at how good this has come up i mean this combing and this winch plinth has basically come up an absolute treat and i'm very very happy that's all integrated in and uh and if you tell me that you can't integrate gel coat then i'll just laugh at you because i've been working with this stuff for years and it's amazing what you can do so a few things to head forward to i'm gonna do the cockpit roof and deck join the uh, clutch bank that's going to be sat here this is all going to be integrated here very shortly the clutches are going to sit actually on the roof here so I'm going to put a big chunk of G10 under there which is going to give me more than enough support and then obviously down to our winches and we're ready to really career forward now that I've finished this cockpit